The Lord be with you. And also with you. Um, a reminder of how we're doing communion. Uh, people who will do the individual cups, uh, remain in your seats, obviously, and uh, I'll let you know when to eat and drink that. Other, everyone else who wants to come up, uh, we'll do it by intention. Give you the bread and then you dip it in the, uh, the wine or the grape juice. Um, we. Uh, we're not doing offerings during the service at the present time, so uh, be sure to put your offering in the plate, either on your way in or on your way out. Um, just wanted to update everybody. People keep asking me about uh, my daughter, Rachel. She's doing very, very well. She was uh, at our house all this past week, and now Coral is at their home uh, in Janesville right now, and. Uh, will be there quite a bit uh, from time to time. But she's, she's just doing marvelously, uh, getting stronger, and everything's going well. So thank you again for all your prayers and your concerns. So let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to those who with repentance and faith turn to him, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hymn number 669, Rise Up, O Saints of God.
Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord.
The second reading is from 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verses 14 through chapter 4, verse 5. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing in his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message, be persistent whether the time is favorable or unfavorable, convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to miss. F for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. Word of God, word of life. In a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city, there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while, he refused. But later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, Yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice, so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Praise to you, O Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There was a very popular TV show a while back, and you can still see reruns of it just about every day, called Friends. I suspect that some of you may be familiar with it. It was quite clever and funny, but one of the best things about Friends was its theme song. It was called I'll Be There For You, and it was sung by a group called the Rembrandts which of course makes it special for me, even though these particular Rembrandts had nothing to do with my hometown. But anyway, one of the recurring lines in the song went like this. It's like you're always stuck in second gear when it hasn't been your day, your week, your month, or even your year. And I suspect that we've all felt that way from time to time. We're having one of those days. And it's just not my day today, or this week, or this month, or
for this year. Jacob, in our story from Genesis, had been having one of those days every day for the past 20 years. If you recall the story, Jacob was the grandson of Abraham and the son of Isaac, and he had a twin brother named Esau. But the two were complete opposites. Jacob was a bit of a scoundrel, and with his mother Rebekah's help, he had tricked his father Isaac into giving him the blessing that was supposed to go to his elder brother Esau. Esau wasn't too pleased with this, and swore that he would get even and kill Jacob. So Rebekah sent Jacob away to her brother Laban's house. But as it turns out, Laban was even more of a scoundrel than Jacob. And for 20 years, Laban made Jacob work for him and had tried to trick and swindle Jacob out of what he had earned which came down to all the spotted and speckled sheep, not to mention his daughter Rachel, whom Jacob wanted to marry. But God had made it so that all the sheep born in Laban's flock were spotted and speckled. So Jacob did end up with the best of the sheep. Oh, and by the way, there is a specific breed of sheep in England known as Jacobian uh, that are all spotted and speckled. But that's another story. Well, now Jacob had had enough, and he was heading back with his sheep and his wives and his children to the land of Canaan where his brother Esau lived. And to say the least, he was really scared. It may have been 20 years ago that Esau had sworn to kill him, but we all know that family grudges can be kept up for generations. 20 years was nothing. So Jacob was getting ready to cross the river and meet his brother when something very unusual happened. And this is a very important story that we read this morning because this is how the name Israel is introduced in the Bible and we're actually told what this name means. And I'll get to that. But to begin this story, the author of Genesis only tells us that Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. Well, I don't know about you, but if I was waiting anxiously for the next day when I had to face something ominous, I would hardly expect some strange man to appear and start wrestling with me all night. But that's what happens to Jacob. And as the story continues, we discover that this stranger is none other than God himself. And even though this wrestling match seems to end in a draw, Jacob won't let this stranger go until he is blessed by him. And so this strange God who wrestles gives Jacob a new name, the name Israel. Israel actually means the one who wrestles with God. Jacob becomes Israel, the father of the whole nation of Israel, and his 12 sons become the ancestors of the 12 tribes. And yes, when Jacob meets Esau the next day, the brothers are reconciled. It seems like it was finally Jacob's day. And we might be tempted to think that from that day on, Jacob was free from trouble. But if you remember how the story goes, we find that Jacob is once again tricked, this time by his ten oldest sons, into thinking that his beloved son, Joseph, had been killed by wild animals. Remember, they did his uh, coat of many colors in the blood of an animal showed that to, the, to Jacob. And this deception went on for 13 more years before Jacob learned that Joseph was alive and had become Pharaoh's right-hand man in Egypt. Then and only then was Jacob able to live out the rest of his 
life in peace and prosperity. Now, when we turn to the parable in today's Gospel, we discover that it also hadn't been this poor judge's day or week or perhaps month. He had been pestered continuously by this widow demanding justice. And likewise, it hadn't been the widow's day or week or month, since she continued to not receive justice. But finally, the judge relents, gives the widow her due, and they both have peace. And this is one of the few times in any of the Gospels that the writer tells us exactly what the parable is meant to say. Luke begins by telling us that Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. This is also one of those how much more parables. If this disrespect disreputable judge relents in order to keep the poor widow from bothering him, then how much more will God listen to us when we pray always and do not lose heart? Last week, we heard about how we ought to thank God for his blessings when he gives healings from leprosy or cancer. And today we hear then that we ought to continually plead with God when we are in need. Indeed, we are to wrestle with God, just as Jacob, Israel, did, and just as the widow continued to plead with the judge in today's parable. God will answer us. The answer may not always be what we expect, but it will always be the right answer. Even Jesus wrestled with God in the Garden of Gethsemane that his cup of suffering might be taken away from him. And the answer was that Jesus did have to drink this cup of suffering on the cross. But God did send angels to strengthen Jesus through his trial. And so in that light, I am reminded of another TV show, a much older one. Father knows best. So let us not stop wrestling with God, pleading with him, but let us also pray as Jesus did, not my will, but your will be done. And this is, of course, what we do pray whenever we pray the Lord's Prayer. Thy will be done. And let us remember that when we pray, God is with us and hears us. It may seem that he wrestles back and gives us hard answers sometimes, but he also does send angels to strengthen us. So if I may be so bold, he has promised to be our friend. That theme song by the Rembrandts, the theme song for friends, could be Jesus telling us to pray always and not to lose heart. It's like you're always stuck in second gear when it hasn't been your day, your week, your month, or even your year. But I'll be there for you when the rain starts to pour. I'll be there for you like I've been there before. Or, in the words of Joseph Scriven, have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Hymn number 742, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in the conscious life, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all of God's creation. For all the baptized, that they may become skilled in compassion and grace, and equipped to share the good news with all. Grant your followers persistence in proclamation and prayer. God of grace, for air and sky, clouds and sun, that they provide rain to parched land and relief to flooded ground. Renew and restore our polluted atmosphere and empower us to be worthy stewards of creation. God of grace, hear our prayer. For judges, juries, and all who work in the judicial system, that they desire wisdom, seek truth, Rule with fairness and have the courage to do what is right. Eliminate oppression and injustice in our criminal justice system. God of grace. Hear our prayer. For all who are lonely, especially those who have newly arrived in an unfamiliar city or country, political prisoners without recourse to justice, hospital patients without visitors, and any who are ill or grief stricken especially those on our prayer list and those we name in our hearts. God of grace, hear, hear our prayer. For those in our congregation and community engaged in advocacy work, that with the persistence of the widow, they lift their voices in seeking justice on behalf of others. God of grace, hear, hear our prayer. For those who have taught us faith and now rest in your heavenly peace, that we remember and give thanks for these saints who shared the gospel through word and deed. God of grace. Hear our prayer. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> Thank you. 
through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, whom you sent to save and redeem us, and to proclaim to us your will. He is your word, inseparable from you. He, our Lord Jesus, fulfilled all your will, and stretched out his hands in suffering, in order to free from suffering those who trust you. He is the one who handed over to a death he freely accepted, taking bread and giving thanks to you, said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering then his death and resurrection, we take this bread and cup, giving you thanks. Send your spirit upon these gifts. Gather into one all who share this bread and wine. Fill us with your Holy Spirit to establish our faith in truth. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. So are there any announcements that we need to highlight this morning? Yeah. Um, Sunday School for All Ages will be next Sunday at 9 o'clock. All are welcome. Thank you. Very good. Wayne. Yes, and I'll remind any council members present that council meeting will be Thursday evening. We will be uh, working on the Constitution, so at, at your convenience, please look it over before the meeting if possible. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hymn number 790, Day by Day.